Oh yeah, what's up everybody and welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning And in this video, we're gonna go back to dynamics and look at the equations of motion using radial and transverse or polar coordinates Here in this problem, I've got a 0.5 kilogram ball right here at P and it's moving along this vertical circular path with an origin at O this arm right there this arm oa is pushing that ball up over the hill if you will <laughs> and and it's got a constant angular velocity of 0.5 radians per second and we want to find the force on the arm when theta equals 30 degrees now before we get into this problem hope you take a minute subscribe like share this video you know and keep supporting structure free and all the videos that I'm making. So here in this problem, we're told that theta dot, this angular velocity is 0.5 radians per second is constant. And one thing that we want to be able to recognize is that if our angular velocity is constant, then our angular acceleration is zero. Yes. Okay. And another thing to note is that a lot of times in problems that tell us, you know, hey, find the force in the arm at a specific angle. Really what that's doing is asking us to look at, you know, what is this force in the arm as a function of theta? And then we ask for a specific instant, theta equals 30 degrees, so that we know, you know, we can compare some numbers as opposed to equations. All right, so one of the first things we want to do before we, with any equation of motion problem, is to draw a schematic. And in this schematic, you know, I've got this particle P. It looks like at, it's drawn at the instant of theta equals 30 degrees. And one of the first things we want to identify is the positive radial and transverse direction. So here, the radial direction goes from the origin through the particle itself. And so here, this is plus r. And then 90 degrees to that, in the direction of that rotating theta, or the transverse direction, is positive theta, which would be generally pointing up this way, plus theta like this. And on the other side of the diagram, this is my force, my free body diagram. And on the other side of that would be this particle here with the same coordinate positive radial and positive transverse directions. Dang, dude, this ruler is amazing. Look at all the straight lines. Oh my gosh. Boom, plus theta like this. And that the right side is going to represent my inertial diagram. And my inertial components always point in the positive sense here. So this will be MAR, and here will be MA theta like this. And now I got to deal with, I got to figure out the forces that are acting on my on my particle at point P here. And so I would have, let's see, I know that there's going to be a weight due to the mass that's acting straight up and down in this vertical plane. So here, boom, like this, yes. I've got a normal force from the surface. And because this is a circular surface, my normal force, it's from the center of the circle to the outer radius like this. So yes, right here, boom. My normal force from the surface of the path right here will we'll go like this. So here, this will be N surface. I'll put surf like that. And then from the arm, from the arm, the normal to the arm here, this arm OA is going to be 90 degrees to the arm itself. And so that would be in the transverse direction like this. This is F arm, F arm. All right, all right. So this is probably the most important part of our process is, you know, is, is to be able to draw this free body diagram on the left and this uh, inertial diagram on the right and then use this diagram to figure out the equations of motion. And so here we have this. And now the next part about this is in order for us to write these equations is we got to figure out some angles. In particular, I'm interested in this angle here. I'll call that phi. And then this angle here, which, oh man, you know, I'm just going to leave these blank for now like this, okay? And I don't know what they are. And so I, I'm going to start with this double angle here. And if I redraw this triangle, 
So this is essentially that triangle that I have here. Let's see, the radius, this is RC, and this is RC, and this is some distance R, and I know this angle is theta, and this is what I know. And I can tell, if I call this angle alpha for now, I, from the law of sines, right? From the law of sines, I could say sine of alpha over RC is equal to the sine of theta over RC. And I see that the RCs cancels out. And what that tells me is alpha equals theta. And so here in this drawing that I have over here, my, my FBD drawing, well, this angle right here is really nothing other than theta, like that. All right, that's pretty good. And, and then I gotta figure out what the heck is this angle right here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, let's see, it might help me if I draw a horizontal line. And, you know, I always find that whenever I'm trying to resolve where the angles are with confidence, you know, drawing this horizontal and sometimes a vertical line like this really helps a lot, okay? And it's worth it so that you don't make a silly mistake later. So I look at that black line here and, you know, looking at this horizontal black line, I know that, you know, this angle here and this angle are the same. That's the same. And then if I look at the horizontal line and I look at this radial line, I see that, well, you know what? I see that that, that horizontal line here is the same as the horizontal line down here, right here. That's the same. And then this, this radial component is, is basically intersecting both the parallel lines. And so I know from that two parallel lines and this line intersecting, hey, this angle here is theta. And now if I'm alternating, this is theta, then the space between W and R, that angle is 90 minus theta. And then this angle here is also theta. Hey, so now I've resolved all the angles and I think I feel pretty confident about moving forward with the rest of the problem. Yes. And so now it's a matter of utilizing the drawing to write the equations of motion. And so here, let me make this kind of small. Oh, I need some space here. So two, and I wanna write the equations of motion. And so the first one, let me deal with the R component. So in the positive radial direction, which is going this way, right here, I would have N surface cosine of theta minus W sine theta equals MAR. Then in the transverse direction, which will be positive this way, and surface sine of theta minus W cosine theta plus the force in the arm is equal to MA theta, like this. Yes, and those are my equations of motion. And if I do a quick inventory, uh, let's see, I'll do a quick little inventory here of what I know or don't know. I don't know the surface, the normal force to the surface. I know the angle of 30 degrees, so I feel pretty good about the thetas. I know the mass of the particle. That means I know the weight of the object, so I feel pretty good about that. I know the mass of the particle, yes. Oh, I don't know the force in the arm, so I'll circle that. And at the moment, I don't know the radial acceleration component or the transverse acceleration component. But guess what? I do know from my kinematic relationships, from my kinematics, I do know some equations for AR and A theta. Yes. And here I know that AR is R double dot minus R theta dot squared. And A theta is R theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot like this. And now I'm gonna use my kinematic relationships to come up with these accelerations so that I can solve for the surface normal force and the force from the arm onto the particle. And so it looks like I need some time derivatives of the radial position. And that radial position equation is, let me see, that radial position equation was R times two times 0.25 meters cosine of theta. And then if I take the time derivative, R dot, you know, there are things I gotta remember, in particular the chain rule, 0.5 negative sine theta, theta dot. And then R double dot would be negative 0.5, I'm gonna hold that sine theta constant first, sine theta, time derivative of theta dot, 
theta double dot plus I'm going to hold that theta dot constant. So minus 0.5 theta dot. So I'm holding theta dot constant and I'm taking the derivative of sine, which is cosine theta theta dot. And if I just rewrite this real quick, this will be all right, and gosh, I know even more, you know, I'm going to evaluate this at theta equals 30 degrees, but I also know theta double dot is zero. And so here I can evaluate each of these at theta equals 30 degrees. And this tells me that R is 0.433 meters, R dot at theta equals 30 degrees, negative 0.125 meters per second, and then R double dot theta equals 30 degrees. Well, I know theta double dot is zero. So this is, and now that I know all my R's and R dots and theta dots and theta double dots, well, shoot, I can determine A R and A theta. And so A R is negative 0.217 meters per second squared and A theta negative 0.125 meters per second squared. Yes. All right. So I have a r and a theta and I go back to my equations of motion and I know that here r was negative 0.217 meters per second squared. A theta is negative 0.125. Yes. And so now I just got two equations, two unknowns. It's a matter of plugging and chugging to solve for the forces. In fact, I'll use the first equation to solve for n surf, all right, the normal force from the surface, then plug it into the second equation and get the force in the arm. It is time to plug and chug. Here we go, so let's see. Here I get 2.71 Newtons. That is the force or the normal force from the surface of that semicircle. And then from equation two, I'm gonna plug this in. And from here, again, one equation now, one unknown, F arm. The force from the arm is 2.83 Newtons. Yes, and this, in a nutshell, is how we apply the equations of motion using our polar coordinates. All right, hopefully this process was pretty straightforward and useful. All right, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Talk to you later. Structure free.